Hi, thanks for tuning in today. Today, I just want to share a few thoughts with you for anyone who may be going through some sort of adversity or trial. Um, a few days back, I'd posted in the community tab something that I'd helped, something that I had hoped would be an encouragement to some of you that might be going through some sort of uh, difficult time. And that's what this video is geared towards. Um, two or three people kind of reached out to me, let me know that they were indeed going through a uh, difficult time. And for many of us, the Christmas season is a joyous and happy time, but there are some people who go through some really hard times during the season. And for those of you, I want to speak to you from my heart. Um, there are no affiliate links or ads to play in this. I have nothing to sell you tonight. I just want to tell you that um, God knows the very hairs of your head. They're all numbered. Uh, not a sparrow um, falls to the ground except your father knows it. And I didn't realize that when I posted that, that a small trial was coming my way that would get me reflecting on some of these things. Now, again, I'm not asking for your concern or compassion or anything like that. I just want to share with you because I had a burden on my heart to make this video and just tell you and share some things with you from my heart that um, as God was working with my heart and um, dealing with me just to open up as your brother um, as someone who is a fellow partaker of the grace of God that um, God is concerned about your situation and that he knows where you're at and he's concerned about you and I, uh, December 16th was the time when my small <laughs> light affliction, um, happened. And, um, I happened to light upon Resolution 57 from Matthew Everhart's new book. Not a plug for his book necessarily, but, um, even though it is, is a good book that I, so far as I can tell. Um, but it says, uh, Jonathan Edwards, Resolution Number 57. He wrote this when he was 19 years old. Resolve what I fear misfortunes and adversities to examine whether I've done my duty and resolve to do it. And let it be as providence orders it. I will, as far as I can, be concerned about nothing but my duty and my sin. He wrote this on June 9th, July 13th, 1723. What he didn't know is that in December 2021, you would be watching, or maybe you're watching sometime later, maybe in 2022. What he didn't know is that these words would echo across time, as it were, and touch me on December 16th, 2021. What Edwards was facing, whatever it was that prompted him to write about his adversity, God's providence God's providence would use it to touch someone else, literally centuries later. And someone else, uh, not a, even a Christian man, uh, said something that was very true. That is that we all have a circle of concern. That's a big circle. But within that circle of concern, there's a circle of influence. There's actually some things that we can do things about. The circle of concern is a big circle. I've got a lot of things I could be worried about. I could worry about the economy. I could worry about uh, what's going to happen in Congress. I could worry about all sorts of things, but they're not within my circle of influence. And what Edwards wisely discerned here as a 19-year-old young man is that when adversity struck, he would focus on his sin and his duty. Those are the two things that were in his circle of influence, something that he could do something about. And then he recognized that God was the one who would control and order events uh, such that he would accept whatever it was from God's hand. And then um, I even um, made a note here so I could remember this day. If I come back to this book, as I was stressed about something that had happened, it was just something that happened at, at work and still kind of going on right now. But um, December 16, 2021 is when those words struck me. And um, if the Lord should grant me 
long life. I trust that that will be uh, just another day, another uh, uh, bump in the road of life. Um, but then tonight, as I was, some more things happened that was sort of unrelated that weren't particularly good. It made me turn uh, to uh, Spurgeon. And I like to read sometimes some old sermons uh, from people in the past, and sometimes I find edification there. And he had a sermon, I'm looking at his book here, uh, Spurgeon's Sermons. He had a sermon about bitter waters, that is Mara. It's, I'll focus on what he talked about is the remedy. Uh, when we come to bitter situations, when we come to the the waters of Mara, this bitter part of life, um, he says, I have shown you the evils of the wilderness and the tendency of nature. It is delightful to behold the remedy of grace. For if thou wouldest have Mara's bitterness healed, take the case in prayer to God. And he begins to talk about um, how prayer works how prayer is effective. And he says, note next that as soon as we have a prayer, God has a remedy. The remedy is near at hand, but we do not perceive it till it is shown us. The Lord, now he's quoting scripture, the Lord showed him a tree. The tree had been growing for years on purpose to be used. And that was one of the things that really struck me. So here are the children of Israel that come out of the land of Egypt and they have gone days without water. And God, all this time, none of this has taken him by surprise. All this time, there's been a tree growing on purpose to be used. For many years, this tree had been growing for a divine purpose. Even though that they had these troubles that were coming up before them, God had already been preparing the remedy. God has a remedy for all our troubles before they happen to us. A delightful employment it is to notice how God foretells himself. How long before we reach the encampment. If there be the bitter well, there is also the healing tree. And then later on he says, the Lord showed him a tree. He goes on and talks about there's no accident that it was a tree. Our first parents had eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and embittered all. There is a tree of life, the leaves of which are for the healing of the nations. Blessed is he that eats of this tree of life. It shall take away from him the bitterness which the first forbidden fruit brought into the world. And he goes on to talk about how the cross can take away the, some of the bitterness of these waters. So I just want to encourage you with a few words that you may be going through some adversity. You may be going through some bitterness. But with the bitterness, with the bitter waters, also comes the tree. And however God works out the remedy, there is an ultimate remedy for the problems that beset mankind. So God has already prepared the tree. Ultimately, the great tree that we look on, look to is the one that Jesus hung on and... and uh, on Calvary, um, but we can have confidence that God, not only does he bring sometimes the bitter water, but with the bitter water, he has a remedy.